Yes. Uh, before <laughs> before we start, uh, just checking, would you like to record a session or is it not uh, necessary? I'm, I'm recording right now. Yes. Okay, okay, perfect. <laughs> just checking. Yeah. Uh, so thank you, Victor, for the introduction. Um, indeed, we are uh, going to present Q3 2022 number uh, today. And we will soon work on Q4 numbers, uh, so that's uh, coming soon as well. So today we're going to talk about Q3, but also the Black Friday numbers. I know Black Friday is in Q4, but we already have some interesting insights, and I know that these insights can be really important to all of you, so we brought as an extra insight. Um, this is what we um, Always do, as you can see on the screen, so we always bring the result from the e-commerce market monitor uh, to begin with. And then we always bring extra insight uh, either by our screeners or other data that we have available in GFK. So in this time, it will be Cyber Monday or Black Friday. So let's go into the first part uh, where we talk about the numbers, uh, especially about uh, what happened in e-commerce in Belgium in Q. 2022. So as Victor mentioned, uh, this is uh, possible thanks to National Lottery and uh, FedEx um, and ov obviously uh, e-commerce uh, itself and uh, we GFK uh, performed the research since 2015. Um, we cover 20 different categories um, B2C, so not B2B included. Um, and we have uh, three data sources to uh, make this available. Uh, so to start with, we have a consumer panel data where uh, 4,000 households uh, always scan whatever they buy in FMCG category. So think about food, but also non-food articles such as cleaning products. So that's covered uh, via these 4,000 people scanning everything they buy. Uh, and also we have a uh, sellout data or, or M, uh, market inside data from the retailers um, that we have uh, via the contract we have with them. For the categories that we cannot cover with these two data sources, uh, we have a survey that we do every quarter. Um, and this can cover a category, for example, package holidays um, or something else like perfume or things like that. Uh, so that was a little uh, introduction about the uh, research, but if you want to know more about it, obviously you can reach out to me or Elena, um, so we can give you more detailed uh, answers. So I talked about 20 categories, and these are the 20 categories that we have included. So on the top you see product, and the bottom you see the services. Uh, in a minute, I will also uh, have this split of product and services, so I thought it would be very interesting to give this brief overview on what is in the category uh, uh, product, sorry, and what is in the services. So, and these are the payment method and devices we cover. Um, as you know, uh, we have a payment method section and payment device session, which I will also go into detail, well, detail in the top line, uh, but we also have a detailed information available uh, for you, uh, but we don't uh, show every detail since, um, yeah, time is limited, and we just want to give you a top line information. So that's enough for an explanation. Uh, let me just go to the, the uh, to the effect itself. Um, so what we see in Q3 2022 uh, is the the purchase has increased in the absolute term a little bit, but if you look at the online share, it uh, dropped from 14 um, to 12 percent. Uh, and if you look at the spending, uh, it's 3.6 billion euro that has been spent online in Q3 2022. And uh, same quarter last year, it was uh, 3.2 billion. So it has increased uh, in terms of spending and also slightly for the online share. So what happened actually? Uh, why is uh, purchase dec declining when it comes to online share? What we can tell you is that if we are looking at products only, so if you remember the slide of the products and the services, we are now looking at only the product categories. Um, you see the same pattern actually in purchases, which shows that the decline that you saw in online share, it's mainly caused by the product categories. 
So, of course, then a uh, question arise. OK, which categories are driving this? So to begin with, we saw the increase uh, in the absolute term. So in the absolute number of the online purchases has increased a little bit. Uh, we took a look at uh, which categories are responsible for this uh, absolute increase. And there are a lot of categories, but main categories were fashion, for example. So people are buying more online um, fashion compared to the same quarter last year. Uh, but also we saw the decline in online share. And if we see where it is coming from, uh, it's mainly toys and um, the telecom. Um, I think I can just give a little bit of I would say personal opinion about this because uh, we, we didn't show it in this slide, uh, but we see a lot of decline in um, uh, people buying uh, taking durable products like washing machine compared to the last quarters uh, due to the inflation, obviously. And I guess that this is what we see in telecom as well, uh, because when I deep dive into data, we see that smart watches are sold less um, or people are purchase, purchasing less. Uh, and that's because only those people who can afford new premium smartwatch is buying the smartwatch at the same time. And if you don't need it, uh, then you would probably not buy it. And they tend to go back to the uh, physical store for the thick and durables more than before. So that's uh, also the trend linked to this uh, simple graph that you are seeing on the screen. Um, and if you are looking at the same analysis for services category, you don't see the, the decreasing trend in the uh, online share for purchases. Again, showing that the decline that we saw in the total market is mainly driven by the product. And if you look at the spending uh, that we saw in the total market that it was increasing, you can also see the same trend here. So while uh, the product categories are uh, driving the decline in online share in purchases, um, the service categories are driving the increase in uh, spending both absolute term, but also the online share. Um, in spendings. So that was the conclusion uh, that I wanted to make by making the split uh, between par products and the services. And we can also take a long term, so not only comparing to the same quarter last year, but also the same quarter over the years. So 2019, that was before Corona. To 2020 was Corona year itself, 2021 a little bit post Corona, but now I hope I really want to say <laughs> post Corona, uh, let's say. Uh, and if you look at the spending level, then you see that it went really down during the Corona years. Makes sense. We couldn't really travel. And the travel sector and event sector were heavily impacted. And then it's coming up slowly. And then now it's uh, slightly above the before as well. So you can also think that this as like, yeah, people couldn't travel, so they wanted to travel more and maybe more premium. So that's uh, the effect that we see in the uh, evolution itself. And we can also see that if you look at per category, so what you are seeing is the online spending uh, in millions. Uh, and then you can see that, for example, package travel uh, really got affected in the Corona years, but that it went back and it's even a little bit higher uh, than before. And uh, if you look at the single airline tickets, you see the same trend, actually. Uh, it had a very negative impact and then it's coming back slowly, even though uh, this one is not as high as well. It's uh, slightly lower than 2019. And you can see the same uh, yeah, trend for the event sectors, tickets and attractions and events that it was impacted negatively and then it's coming back. So that's a, that's the detailed view of what you see in here, but the conclusion is the same. Uh, service sector is coming back. And what you can also see um, is the um, per percent of um, products and per services. So what happened in 2020 is the service sector has been impacted heavily. So if you look at the proportion uh, of value spent uh, of product categories and service categories, service category went really down because, because the absolute term 
it was down um, and then it's recovering slowly now. And you can also see that uh, in these figures. So it's a lot of different visualization, different analysis, but we all see the same conclusion and service sector is uh, taking off. Again, it's almost uh, at a normal level and for some categories even higher. Oop. And I said in the beginning uh, that we also cover uh, payment methods and devices. So I wanted to give you a top line information about what happened in Q3 2022. Uh, but again, if you need more details, we have uh, even dashboard for it uh, where you can deep dive into categories um, per se. Uh, so we can also give you detailed information about that. So, um, so what we see is the percentage of online buyers who used a specific payment method at least once for online purchases. Um, so what we, how we have to read it is that 53% of online buyers use upon contact at least once uh, during the period of Q3 2022. So that is most popular method um, and it's followed by credit card and PayPal. Um, apparently uh, PayPal is less used than uh, same quarter last year. Um, and also, we also see that Visa, David, and Clara is going up um, in comparison uh, and compared to the PayPal trends. So that's interesting trend to uh, look into um, whether that will stay. But what is also interesting is that if we look at the share of uh, spending per payment method, um, even though PayPal is losing popularity in terms of how many people are using it, the share of spending stays rather stable. So it does not mean that it's becoming less important. So that's a uh, note that that's important to make, uh, that even though less people are using it, maybe they're spending more money via PayPal. Okay, so that was the payment method. So I would like to give... Uh, go into the two payment devices. Uh, this is the same uh, logic. So this is about the percentage of online buyers that use a uh, specified device at least once for online purchases. And the way that we have to read it is that 50% of online buyers used a laptop at least once for their online purchases in Q3 uh, 2022. Uh, so that was the most uh, popular one, um, followed by smartphone and uh, desktop and tablet. And what is interesting to note is that the smartphone is getting more popular uh, over the years. And we also see that in Q3 2022. And if you look at the share of spending, uh, you can see the importance of a smartphone increasing uh, in share of spending as well, the yellow line that you are seeing. So when we first started the uh, study, it was 3% of uh, all online spending was done via smartphone, but now it's 20%, um, which is maybe not surprising for you, but e-commerce is definitely becoming more mobile and you can also see that in our figures. So that was a, a brief overview of what happened in Q3 2022 in e-commerce. Uh, and I would like to give the floor to Elena now, uh, who will explain more about Black Friday. Thank you, Freya. I will start sharing my screen. Okay. So uh, like mentioned by Freya, so next to the general um, market results, uh, we also uh, present a specific topic and this time it will be about Black Friday. And uh, the insights uh, about this topic are based on our GFK Multiscope study, which, which is a bi-weekly uh, omnibus study where we as a GFK uh, can put in some questions about uh, a specific topic, topic to really gather insights uh, regarding consumer perceptions. But Black, Black Friday this year uh, was, around, was the 25th of November and Cyber Monday the 27th uh, of November and our GFK Multiscope study was just before. So to give you also some insights regarding 
some real data about uh, Black Friday. We also added some uh, insights of our um, of the sales tracking uh, of our market intelligence um, colleague. So let's start with giving you some uh, history about Black Friday. Well, the term uh, Black Friday uh, originated in the 50s uh, by Philadelphia cops to describe uh, um, the chaos uh, on the day after Thanksgiving. Um, on this day, there were a lot of uh, traffic jams, um, crowds and even shoplifting um, present in the city and mainly because of um, a big Navy Army football game, which is a game, a big game uh, between um, yeah, um, an equipment of uh, the Navy um, College versus the Army College. Now, then in the late 80s, uh, retailers repurposed uh, the term to indicate um, that the retailers are finally turn a profit for that year. So they get they go from red to black. And then finally, Black Friday grew out to this uh, big multi day uh, shopping event where a lot of um, yeah, Americans head out to gain a bargain, to score a bargain. So over 60% of the Americans now participate in this um, Black Friday event. But yeah, you all know now that it's not just an American event anymore, and it's just it's also in different um, countries uh, present, like for instance in Belgium. Now, our results showed that 35% um, of the consumers had the intention to buy during uh, Black Friday or Cyber Monday in 2022. And from these uh, consumers that had intention to buy online, 87% wanted to uh, shop this via web shops and 23% via click and collect. Now, if you're going to compare this 35% uh, purchase intention in 2022, with our data from 2020, so during the corona pandemic, we see that now we are back at normal, um, that these purchase intentions, online purchase intentions are much lower, which is not, um, of course, we have to keep in mind that during the corona pandemic in 2022, these purchase intentions uh, were really boosted because, of course, there was uh, most of the time no other um, option to shop online because physical stores were closed. On the other hand, we also see that people that are now um, have the intention to shop online will also uh, use that to replace their Christmas shopping. And this percentage is also higher than 2022, uh, where this was only 41%. And if we then take a look at the products or services that people uh, prefer to buy during Black Friday or Cyber Monday, we see that fashion remains uh, the prior category with 50% of the consumers that uh, have the intent to make an online purchase wanted to purchase fashion, followed by uh, entertainment and small ho household appliances. Now compared to 2022, uh, 2020, we see uh, that uh, especially household appliances, uh, both small and large household appliances, as well as uh, travel services, uh, increased compared to 2020. Now, this was it about the uh, intentions of uh, consumers to shop online during Black Friday. We will now take a look at some uh, real sales data to show you the key trends for consumer uh, technologies and uh, durable products in Belgium. You can see if we compare uh, the Black Friday week, which was week 47 in 2022, with the week before, we saw a uh, growth of 58% sales across all technical consumer goods categories. But if you compare this Black Friday week with uh, the Black Friday week of 2021, we see a small decrease of about 2%. And we see especially in high growth for uh, electric heating, built-in hops and gaming and leisure products. Then if you take a look at the pre-Black Friday weeks, uh, you clearly can see that there is a decline 
visible. And if you take a look at the Black Friday season, which we define as uh, the Black Friday week and two weeks uh, before Black Friday, we see that it's Black, this Black Friday season is positive, especially thanks to the growth in uh, the week before Black Friday. Then we also uh, noticed that there were uh, more price promotions during Black Friday in 2022 compared to 2021, and that especially um, audio home systems were mostly impacted by these price cuts. Then Black Friday also boosted up the online share, as you can see here uh, for um, all categories uh, ranging from technical consumer goods to uh, telecom. The online share, share and percentage uh, is higher uh, during the Black Friday week compared to an average week. And if you then also take a look at uh, the sales value percentage um, compared over the years, you clearly see here for all categories that um, two the Black Friday week of 2020 is popping out which was, of course, um, during uh, the corona pandemic. And um, if you take a look at 2022, we see it's quite comparable with 2021. It's sometimes higher, uh, for instance, uh, with information technology or consumer electronics. But uh, especially compared to 2019, we see uh, that it's definitely compared to that, an increase, but not, of course, like uh, in the pandemic. So these were the main insights uh, regarding Black Friday. Let's end with a recap uh, the key insights um, of this presentation. Well, uh, we saw that e-commerce continues uh, to show a positive evolution, so it keeps growing with 3.6 billion euros spent online in the third quarter of 2022, also uh, without the new categories. We see the same trend. And then it's especially the service sector that's the main contributor to this growth, as uh, services are surpassing uh, their share of online spending compared to before the pandemic. And this is especially, can especially be attributed to the recovering or even boosting event and travel sector. Then we also notice that um, PayPal is becoming less uh, popular with consumers, as they are uh, less frank frequently used as a payment method. But uh, it's important to mention that this does not translate into a decline in share in total online spending. Then we also see that smartphone is becoming uh, an increasingly popular uh, device for making online purchases. But it also here is important to note that uh, laptops still remain the most used devices for online purchases. And then regarding the online purchase intentions for Black Friday, we see a decrease compared to during the pandemic. Um, and also we notice that um, these uh, Black Friday shoppings are replacing consumers' Christmas shopping. And during the Black Friday uh, season, it's mostly about fashion. So most people will buy fashion products uh, during Black Friday or Cyber Monday. Um, however, uh, the intention to buy household appliances, both small or uh, large, uh, or travel services are increasing. So, um, this were, were the main insights uh, from our market monitor and our special topic regarding Black Friday. Um, thank you for your attentions. And of course, please uh, share with us uh, if you have any questions. Does anyone, does anyone have any questions? Um, there's now room to, to ask questions about the numbers that Freya and, and, and Elina just um, presented. So if you have any questions, fire away.
If there are no questions, um, I may propose that then we close this webinar, or I don't know how you see it, Freya and, and Elina. Um, uh, for our side, I think it's okay. You can also send us a question later if you... Yes, if, if yeah. you have any questions later, you can send to Freya or Elina um, some questions. I think I, I will definitely send also a recording of this um, webinar to everyone who attended. And uh, so can we watch it later? Uh, yes. I have a question in the chat. Um, yes, yeah, so I will share the presentation um, afterwards. Um, so um, you can rewatch. I think um, <laughs> I don't know if I can share the presentation itself, but I don't know if that's okay for you, Freya or, or Elina. Uh, yes, we will uh, make uh, the new version to you and send it to you so you can share with the members if yes, you want. Okay, I will. <laughs> Um, okay, then we close this webinar and uh, thank you, Freya and, and Elina, for uh, the information. Oh, I see someone is typing. Uh, yes, <laughs> I just thank you. Know. you. <laughs> uh, so thank you for, for the webinar, for the presentation, and uh, I'll communicate um, the presentation and the recording to our members. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. and then it will stop. Uh.